honor for me to invite Gary Hawkins and his wife. Gary wrote a book called A Life Redesigned. Um, I read the book and Thank it's you. really um, resourceful, I have to say, and it has so much information inside. So, um, what inspires you to write this book? Uh, well, the inspiration for the book is, um, is probably not the answer you're expecting. So it's kind of circumstance. Okay. So um, I've been planning a period of, a, if you like, long-term travel or retirement for a long period of time. And uh, we've been together for 20 years now. Close. Close to 20 years. Four years ago, we adopted our daughter, Joy. Um, and those two, that, that really sort of led Yafe to coming on board with this idea of spending more time with our daughter and traveling and so forth and so on. And so in the planning process for this, um, I started to make notes and what we needed to do. And, and I ended up with so many notes that it was like, well, why not share this with everybody else in the form of a book? So it was kind of circumstance. So what is called a life redesign in your term? Like, what does that mean to you when you say redesigned? Well, we were, we, we, we both come from corporate environments. Um, okay. I was originally born in the UK, as you can probably tell from the accent. Um, I came across to um, America <coughs> in 95. Okay. Uh, Yafe came across to America in 1992 for the same reasons, for school and work. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know we, we, we've done the, the typical American dream if you like ever ever since or until recently anyway you know we've we've worked hard we've bought a house we've started to raise a family what everybody would call the American dream okay I finished my corporate work in 2017 beginning of 2017 after a pretty successful career I was a CTO for an IT services okay. company a VP of product management for a billion dollar company and Yafe spent 15 years with Qualcomm that was her last thing and so um, you know we, we were both part of that and to walk away from that is kind of a life redesigned right because wherever you know if you change your life significantly from if you like the typical American dream and walk into something else then that's where the title of the book came from so you are redesigned to a next phase so yes. what is your next phase now <laughs> um, so we've got different goals for this and I'm sure Yafe will 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 add some things to this but my goal really around this started about, um, well it started over 30 years ago. Okay. So I was in the UK at that time. Okay. I lived with my mum and dad, uh -huh. I had a brother as well. And um, my dad was a typical working class engineer. Okay. You know, we weren't a particularly rich family. We, it was a very normal existence. Um, but my dad had taught me two really important things. One, never spend money that you don't have. Good idea. Advice for everyone out there. <laughs> and, no loan, no debt. <laughs> in fact, the only debt he ever carried was the mortgage on his house. Oh. So he never had a credit card. If he didn't have the money in his back pocket, he never spent it. Okay. So that was the first lesson. And then the second lesson that my parents taught me was live within your means. But the really important thing was my dad worked hard. They saved money and he retired at the age of 52. Ooh, which early. That's right, early which for, uh, for working class, yeah. particularly for their background, is extremely uh -huh. early. And so I kind of looked at that when I was growing up, and I basically said to myself, "That's what I want to do." Retire at age fifty. Fifty-two. <laughs> yeah, I wanted. I wanted to retire at the same age as my dad. I missed I it by two years, uh, but it, you know, it was close enough. So, so that was where my goals came from. But Yafe's goals are somewhat different. Yeah, my goal is, you know, we've been married almost 20 years. Um, there is always a discussion in terms of how we look at life. Based on the different backgrounds, he's from UK, I'm from China. Of course, our education background, family background different. Mm -hmm. So in life, the goal also different. Being a Chinese and growing up in China as well, 
uh, the goal in life always hey study and work. <laughs> yeah, no never retirement. <laughs> never thought about the retirement. Uh -huh. Never even think about not working um, yeah. because it's just not in our DNA, and we're accustomed to study hard, work hard. You either go to go to uh, school to study or work. So there's no such thing called not working. So I'm not very tuned into the retirement concept for a long period of time because it's just not in me. But however, once we got joy, um, my goal is I want to do focus on family and spend time with uh, Gary and Joy and travel. So travel, it is my goal, but with the family together. And uh, with that, um, so the goal is a different with Gary, but it seems like we can work out, um, you know, even though different goal, but we can still work out um, how we achieve those goals. So um, I know that Joy is not your own, yeah? You adopted? Actually, you know, we married in 2000. Uh, at the beginning, we were thinking of living the life for just two of us for a while, and then uh, <clears throat> I became really a uh, strong desire to, to be a mom. So after tried many years on our own, fail, and also tried IVF, fail. And then how, that's how we started thinking, uh, especially Gary gave a very, very strong support that if we cannot have our own, why not we go for adoption? So it takes a while to do some of the research. Uh, we've gone through looking at China, looking at Southeast Asia, uh, South America, Europe, uh, uh, East Europe, East Bloc. But turned out that we said, okay, there's very a lot of complications uh, for the international adoption. Why not we focus on the U.S.? So we started on the U.S. and there was so many different ways. If anyone online or out there want to learn how to adopt in U.S., come to me. Because <laughs> I learned a lot of experience how to do it from county adoption to in independent adoption. So in the end, we gone through the independent adoption. It's a really a, a emotional roller coaster. You have to be really prepared um, in your you know internal um, emotions. Be strong. So in the end, the agency uh, matched us with the first uh, mom who is very young uh, in Tennessee, and uh, we had a good relationship. We talked to each other on the phone on the regular basis, almost on a weekly basis. <clears throat> January. Um, 2015, we flew over and we wait until she was born. So literally, she was born in Tennessee University uh, Medical Center. And we were there at the uh, hospital that she was born. So we were so blessed with uh, this beautiful, healthy little girl uh, five years ago. So almost she's five. Oh, yeah. that's, that is an amazing story. So yeah, they in the, you know uh, we are talking about some Chinese stereotypes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you know everybody wants you to go to good school, have a good job, you know, and the Qualcomm is considered one of the good companies. How that makes you feel to quit and uh, you know start raising your daughter and go travel around and do a different thing to study this new phase. How do you feel? Like, what are those like initial um, thoughts go through your head when you're deciding whether you want to quit that job? Yeah, it's a really good question. It wasn't an easy decision uh, at the beginning. So it's a it's a process. It's not like I one day I woke up, I make the decision, I quit my job. Uh, being a Chinese, never quit your job <laughs> unless in a really really bad circumstances. Um, so it's a, it was a process. It took a couple of years to make the decision. So initially when Gary brought it up to travel with Joy for a couple of years, I was reserved. Uh, I couldn't, um, you know, I had many, many worries. Like most of Chinese, we do. We worry about money, worry about our health, what happened if we got sick when we travel. 
and worry about Joy's education on the road, and also worry about my parents. Uh, they live in San Diego and they are getting old, and I'm currently I'm looking after them. So a lot of worries, and I couldn't make that decision. So all of these worries and concerns really par paralyzed me, uh, not making any decision moving forward. Um, but as we get older, I see joy in the interactions and down in the couple of years, I feel as she gets older, I want to spend more time with her. And uh, I start to think about uh, Gary's uh, proposal. So it's, it is a good proposal that we travel together. And uh, yes, of course, I have these concerns, but looking at my parents' health, and I'm thinking of when we get older, just like Gary mentioned that, we're older parents, when we get older, we couldn't do a lot of things together. So this is the best time to do things as a family. So in 2018, um, after a couple of years, considering Gary's proposal, uh, I made a decision that, okay, now is about the time Joy was close to four, three and a half and four, and uh, it's about the time uh, I want to think about what's the new life ahead of us. We've also been uh, running a really detailed financial, ongoing financial analysis. Mm -hmm. So literally at the end of every quarter, I will go through every one of our accounts. It goes into a spreadsheet. We know where we should be. We look at where we are. We look at the difference. If we're on track, we open a bottle of wine. And if we're not, we get plenty of warning that things are you know, not going in the right direction. So I, I think one of the things that made Yafe a lot more comfortable, we had five years of financial numbers where we could basically look at those numbers and say, we've been on track for the last five years. There's absolutely no reason why we can't stay on track because we know what we're doing in terms of our financial planning. The enablers to this process, right? Uh -huh. Part of it is the sharing economy, which is making new types of accommodation available to people. House sitting is a good example. Uh -huh. uh, long, you know, sort of short to medium term accommodation like Airbnb is another example, right? Uh -huh. That's through the sharing economy. Yes. And then there's the gig economy, which is essentially remote, remote work. And the yes. fact that companies are working, are moving from a traditional employer-employee relationship to often a remote employer-employee relationship. Yes. And then finally, there's the internet itself and the ability to actually connect to it. And really, you know, we're getting to that point now with 4G and the technology changes there where you can basically go most places in the world now and have a decent internet connection. Right. And that enables the first two things to happen, right? For you to be able to use the sharing economy and to be able to take advantage of the gig economy. Yeah. So it's those things that really enable this to take place from a technology perspective. Uh, uh, the people you met in... Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, I think a couple of really interesting things have come out of the travel. Um, one of the ways that we do long-term travel is, uh, and sort of going back to the live within your means comment uh -huh. I made earlier on, um, we use house sitting accommodation okay. a lot. So we actually travel to different parts of the world and we will house sit for other people. So uh -huh. invariably that's their house and most importantly their pets. And so um, that in itself actually has turned out to be a pretty rewarding experience. Um, it's fun to be in a community for a longer uh -huh. period of time than you typically would be if you're in a hotel. That's true. Like um, it's yeah. <laughs> tremendous living in a house where you've got a kitchen and washing and stuff and everything that's, you know, like a regular house. And actually looking after other people's pets can be great. I mean, we've stayed on farms, we've stayed in some beautiful houses, we've looked after dogs, cats, rabbits, horses. It's, you know, it really is an experience. Not only for us, but also for Joy. I mean, she loves animals. Yeah, I bet. Um, so the house sitting side has been tremendously re rewarding. Um, we've also had the chance to spend a lot more time with my family in the UK, which is nice. My dad is getting older and 
he's not so well either. So from that perspective, it's been successful. Um, there are challenges. Um, you know, I think if, you know, family dynamics, you're together 24 seven uh, for a long period of time. Um, there are some challenges there. Yes. Um, <laughs> Particularly, and we're kind of working through those. Uh, we had, we had, a, we've had a few challenges around homeschooling. Joy, I see. Uh, it's not an easy process when you're a parent and you're trying to school your own child. But that seems to be getting a little bit better now. She seems to be more receptive to, you know, accepting us as teachers as well as parents. Um, and we we've, we've met some great people. I mean, we, tr I mean, just to give you an example, we were in a local pub in South Wales. Okay. Having a beer, talking to the locals, we bumped into a guy, started chatting. He was a sound engineer. Asked a few questions. He was a sound engineer in a record um, music recording studio. Asked a few more questions, and we found out that he actually works for like one of the largest recording studios in the world. It's a place called Rockfield Studios. Uh -huh. Practically every major band has recorded there. It's, it's on a pig farm in Monmouth. It's the weirdest thing. We went there, we were invited to go and take a private tour, and Yafe actually sat at the very piano where Freddie Mercury composed Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> because you have this opportunity to like integrate more with the community rather than just going and seeing sites and stuff like that, um, you get to know the people. We, we met a lot of locals, and they've got really interesting stories. And I, I think for us, it's more about the experience of being in different communities as opposed to, you know, just taking something off of a bucket list, right? You know, yeah. we've seen the Eiffel Tower or uh -huh. we've seen, you know, whatever. Um, so it's more experiential for us. Um, and I think as we go forward and we're looking at plans for the future, we're looking at things like staying on a farm for doing farming for a couple of months. Um, Cowboy for a couple of months. I would actually, believe it or not, there are actually lighthouses that you can look after in, in, around the world. We're, that's one of my plans. I want to go and look after a lighthouse, lighthouse for a couple of months. Yeah, there's some unique experiences out there. Um, and I think, you know, we've had a lot of fun. And we, we just need to, like you say, you need to adapt to the challenges. As you, as you identify a challenge, you just need to adapt and work right around it. So um, in this two week period time, how do you feel now after you kind of uh, in this new phase? And what are you feeling it? You know, compare before. Very happy, and I'm I'm so proud of myself that I make that uh, big leap in my life to uh, make that decision. And uh, so in the, almost I left Qualcomm in. End of September 2018. Okay. So by now it's just over a year, uh -huh. and I've been taking joy to different places: China, Mexico, England, all different places. And at the same time, I'm also looking after my parents because my dad just diagnosed with prostate cancer end of last year. I see. <clears throat> so within this year, um, I'm spending a lot of time uh, with my parents, which also I feel very good about it when they need me and I have time and energy to help them rather than if I'm still full-time work I will be struggle with my work struggle looking after them so um, you know if anyone wants to know much of that digital age traveling really need to check out Gary's book and in his book, he outlined he has a lot of resources in there for different type of economy, as he called it, gig economy right. and shared economy, and the resources, the internet, you know, the how to make living money off when you are traveling, and uh, the, it's what uh, I see is very inspirational to me is that you know you kind of like. You doing the things. You're planning ahead. You're not like freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> that, but for younger people, they can be freestyle because they're young. They can afford fall off and get it back. You know, right. like a, a, what a, different age stages. You know, people can choose different type of uh, arrangement. Right. So yeah, and with the uh, new te the technology development, it allows us to be more free and also redefining what is an. Uh, work, 
retirement, what is the employee-employer relationship, mm -hmm. and what is the workplace relationship right. now. You yeah. Know? So this is like a right on. Yeah. <laughs> and the book is available on Amazon. Yeah. Just search yeah. a life redesigned by Gary Hopkins.